Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, Internet. This year, our gift to you are the top 10 Christmas films that you didn't know were Christmas films. Number 10, Eyes Wide Shut. This is a film that keeps your eyes wide open if you've ever seen it. Starring Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman while they were still happily married, it marks Kubrick's last film to be released theatrically. He would go on to pass away during his next project, AI Artificial Intelligence. The studio forced Kubrick to cast A-listers for the key characters, much to his disagreement. One hadn't helmed his film since Saucy Jack and The Shining. Eyes Wide Shut is Kubrick's Alice in Wonderland, with Tom Cruise being our Alice and the secret society underworld of New York City during Christmas as our Wonderland. Can I sit up until you get home? No, darling. <laughs> it's going to be a little late for that. Number nine, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Shane Black's directorial debut. After years of writing for Hollywood, Black decided to throw together a dark and funny neo-noir murder mystery. Black likes white, so he puts his characters in a snowy white wilderness during Christmas. Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer star opposite each other and provide the on-screen chemistry that makes this action comedy drama a hit for the holidays. Kilmer had to shave the 50 pounds he put on for the movie Alexander to secure the role. Good healing, Val. Look up idiot in the dictionary. You know what you'll find? A picture of me? No! The definition of the word idiot! Number eight, Trading Places. This one is a classic, even if it does fall into the bowels of 80s comedy. Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy as Wall Street power brokers. The screenplay received much of its inspiration by the writers hanging out with drunken day traders on Wall Street, which makes the film all that more hilarious to contemplate. Aykroyd and Murphy almost never got the roles in the first place because Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor were the production company's first choices. Regardless, Aykroyd and Murphy have enough screen presence to keep your attention during the holidays. Hey man, I'm sorry about that. Number seven, The Long Kiss Goodnight. Another screenplay by writer Shane Black and also set during Christmas. Gina Davis steps into the female like Jason Bourne role, distancing herself from romantic comedy roles like A League of Their Own. Samuel L. Jackson supplies foul-mouthed humor while Davis wreaks holiday havoc for your enjoyment. The studio considered using a male lead like Steven Seagal, but we're happy with the gorgeous red hair and dimples over the ultra-tight jeans and ridiculous ponytail. Take that to the bank. I'm gonna take you to the bank, Senator Trent. To the blood bank. Number six, Iron Man 3. When Iron Man came out in 2008, the cinematic universe changed forever, and not just the MCU. This is another screenplay and film directed by Shane Black. It was his second time working with Robert Downey Jr. In fact, Iron Man became an overnight success, and Robert Downey Jr. used his influence to help Shane Black secure the script and director's chair for Iron Man 3. Peter Billingsley, who played Ralphie from A Christmas Story, is friends with John Favreau and was an executive producer on Iron Man, which ties another Christmas bow atop this holiday film. What's your name? Aaron. I loved you in A Christmas Story, by the way. Number five, Batman Returns. Before Tim Burton was obsessed with Helena Bonham Carter, he gave us the first modern look at Batman. It was a memorable cast in possibly the darkest Batman film ever made. Michelle Pfeiffer as the fiercely seductive Catwoman and Danny DeVito as the deranged Penguin Man of the Sewers took the Tim Burton comic book world to new levels of disturbing. But we could have seen a different film altogether. Originally, Annette Bidding was cast as Catwoman. Max Schreck was to be played by David Bowie and Marlon Brando was the first choice for the Penguin. It wouldn't have been the same. Women, nothing surprises me, Chip. Except your late mother. Number four, Lethal Weapon. This action classic was also set around the holidays. Written by, you guessed it, Shane Black. Having just finished work on a handful of films, Leonard Nimoy was the first to be approached to direct the film. He turned it down for another project and Richard Donner took the helm. And if you think stunt doubles do all the work, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover were trained in three different forms of martial arts to better portray their roles. <laughs> yeah. You think I'm crazy? Yeah. yeah. How are you calling me crazy? crazy? You think yeah. I'm crazy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you want to see crazy? I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, Gremlins. This 1984 creature feature did more than just cause mischief in the small town of Kingston Falls. It actually created some difficulties for the MPAA. Both Gremlins and Indiana Jones had content that made it difficult to give proper movie ratings to audiences, thus creating the PG-13 rating we have today. Though a formal rating was found after production, the script went through a huge transformation before it was ready to film. 
In the original screenplay, many of the characters died in gruesome ways, including Billy's mom. And our favorite furball gizmo actually became the homicidal gremlin, Stripe, after he ate past midnight. Big change. My God, Fry. Number two, Edward Scissorhands. Another out of the Tim Burton collection, this one stands out as one of the most colorful. The reason behind using such a pastel canvas for the neighborhood was to tell the entire story through the eyes of Edward. The whole story was based on a drawing Burton made in high school. Caroline Thompson, the screenwriter, based Edward's character off of her recently deceased dog. When Johnny Depp arrived on set, he was a little confused about his character. Once Thompson explained her dog was her inspiration, things clicked right into place and Depp's performance would go on to live in cinema history. Hold me. And finally, number one, Die Hard. There are cop movies, and there are Christmas movies, and then there is Die Hard. Originally intended to be a Commando sequel starring Arnold Schwarzenegger, Die Hard became a huge phenomenon that spawned four sequels. But before that, the studio left Bruce Willis out of the movie poster completely. At the time, he was considered just another TV actor, and they were afraid his face might prevent it from being a box office smash. Alan Rickman, who plays arguably the best villain of all time, was trained as a stage actor and was not used to the action of a movie set. Rickman would flinch every time he fired a gun, so the editor had to cut away so we wouldn't see that action. But he wasn't the only one affected by the extra loud blanks that were used during the making of the movie. When Bruce Willis shoots a terrorist through the table in this one scene, he calls permanent damage to his hearing. For me, this movie will always be in my top five, and it's not officially Christmas yet, until Hans Gruber falls from atop the Nakatomi Plaza. Rest in peace, Alan Rittman. That's our list of top 10 movies you didn't know were Christmas movies. And for the rest of you, have a happy holiday season and a Merry Christmas.